Hi everybody, this is Tracy Bookman, owner of Homestead Roofing, and this is episode three of our video series, Seven Things You Need to Know About the Insurance Claim Process. Now this video kind of assumes that you've already filed a claim, the adjuster's already been out to your property, and now you've gotten your claim document. So if you haven't filed a claim, and if you don't know how to file a claim, then go back and watch episode one first before you watch this one. Now, as we've mentioned in previous videos, the chances are pretty high that your insurance claim estimate is going to be lower than your roofing contractor's estimate. We've also explained that the paperwork that you get from the insurance company is just that, it's an estimate. So it's not set in stone. If you're working with a professional roofing contractor and his price is higher than your insurance claim amount, this really isn't anything that you need to worry about because like I say, that's most of the time that's fairly normal. So the very next thing for you to do is to sit down with your roofing contractor and go over the insurance claim versus the contractor's estimate and look at those differences. Now some people are actually kind of hesitant about letting the roofing contractor see the insurance claim paperwork, seeing the actual dollar amount. Some people are even more hesitant about giving the insurance claim paperwork to the roofing contractor, but that's actually a, a fairly important part of the process, and here's why. Imagine that you have a contractor that you wanna work with, but there's a price difference. So if you don't want to let the roofing contractor be involved in the process of talking to the insurance company and going over the differences and asking them to make up the differences, then you have really three options. So let's talk about those options. The first option that you have is to try to get your contractor to lower his price. Now, if the price difference between the insurance claim and the contractor's estimate is fairly small, then your contractor might actually be um, agreeable to doing that just so that the, the job doesn't slow down, just so that he can get the, the work done for you uh, and get everything closed out. So that is a possibility that your contractor might do that. However, if the, if the cost difference between the claim and his estimate is fairly large, then it's really doubtful that your roofer is going to want to absorb that loss. And he's gonna to wanna to talk to the insurance company and get them to understand what items are in his estimate that are necessary to be done to get you back to light kind of quality, get you back to pre-storm condition, which is what your insurance coverage is for after all. Option number two is to just simply try to find a contractor who will just immediately agree to do it for whatever the insurance claim amount is. And that oftentimes is kind of the mindset that people are in because they think, well, I have to talk to three contractors, I have to get three different estimates, I have to get three different prices and find the price that is the closest to the insurance claim amount. And that's actually not true. You don't really need to do that. You, you don't really need to get three estimates. If you find a contractor that's just gonna do it for whatever the insurance amount is, then if, if that insurance amount isn't actually covering the costs that need to be covered and the roofing contractor can't make enough money in the job, he's going to take shortcuts. Option number three, this is really the one that most people don't even wanna to try to get into, is fight with the insurance company on your own. Now, if you're persistent and you know your facts and you understand the roofing process and you understand the line items that are in your roofer's estimate, that actually can work out really well for you. But most people don't understand the roofing process. Most people um, aren't aware of how to talk to the insurance company, the claim reps, the desk adjuster or the field adjuster. And so it, that can actually be a really intimidating process for most homeowners. Now, most roofing contractors are willing and able to talk to your insurance company and discuss their estimate compared to the claim amount with the claim rep or an adjuster at the insurance company. Most roofing contractors are going to be able to explain all the different line items that are in the estimate and why they're necessary, again, like I say, to get your property back to like kind and quality of what you had before the storm and get your roof and your property back into the condition that it was before 
it was damaged by the storm event. But to be able to do this, your roofing contractor not only needs to be able to see the insurance claim document, but needs to have a copy of the claim document because he's not gonna be able to call the insurance company uh, while sitting there in your home and looking through your document and then be able to, to spend the time to go over each item that's necessary to, to, to be added to the claim document sitting there in your living room or at your dining room table. That's gonna be something that he's gonna to wanna to go back to his office and compare, make sure that he's got all the photos that he needs to document what's necessary, make sure that he's got copies of all the code that's necessary, the manufacturer's installation specs, because he's gonna take that basically as a packet of information that's supporting his estimate and his position of why his estimate is what it is, and he's gonna send all that information to your insurance company and the adjuster or the claim rep. All of that information has to be gathered and collected and sent in. It's not something that he can just do on the fly, like I say, sitting there at your dining room table. But here's one word of warning. Don't give your insurance paperwork, either the actual the hard copy or an electronic copy, don't give the insurance paperwork to a contractor who, number one, you haven't chosen to work with, and number two, hasn't come to you with an estimate in hand. That's very important. You wanna make sure that uh, you're not giving that insurance paperwork out to every contractor that you're interviewing. You wanna make sure that you're giving it only to the contractor that you've selected to work with. And like I say, don't give it to a contractor who hasn't already built an estimate to do the project. The reason for that, you wanna know what it is that he's proposing to do to your roof before he sends that information to the insurance company. So for you as the homeowner, for you as the insured person, um, you wanna make sure that you're sitting down with your contractor and comparing and contrasting those two documents, the insurance claim, and the roofer's estimate and ask the roofer to explain to you what he's going to ask the insurance company to add to the claim. Anything that the contractor is going to ask your insurance company to add to the claim is called a supplement and that's the subject of episode four. So if you've got any questions about this or you need somebody to help you with a re-roof project that you've got, whether it's an insurance claim related one or not, please give us a call at our office phone number. That's right up here, 719-433-6991. You can also visit our website. And of course, that's right down here, homesteadroofingcolorado.com. We'd love it if you'd give us a big thumbs up for this video if you like it. Please share it, send it out to your friends, family, neighbors, coworkers. Also, please subscribe to our channel and so that you don't miss episode four when it comes out, click the bell icon up there so that way you get notified when we've got new videos. And until our next video, I'm Tracy Bookman, owner of Homestead Roofing.